All right, what is the graph and what does it mean to be a curator? Um, to start off, well, first off, this is Derek from Data Nexus. Um, you can find me in Discord and in Telegram as Data Nexus, but feel free to call me Derek. Uh, let's just go over some of the basics on what the graph is and specifically what it means to be a curator for the graph. Uh, so the graph is a set of open APIs. Now what that means is when you go to a website, uh, like take Uniswap for example, uh, all of this data, this changes um, you know, throughout the day. This is not a static thing. And so in order for that data to change on the website, it needs to ping a database to find out what the data is. Um, something like their logo, that doesn't necessarily need to be pinged each time and refreshed constantly. That's just a static image. So in order to ping this information, they have to utilize what's called an API. And if you press F12 while you're in Chrome, you'll get this thing called the, your dev tools. And just to show you what an API looks like, I'm going to refresh the page. And you can see all of this stuff is loading. So I'm going to sort it by type, and you can see all of these fetches. It's going out and trying to gather information about something to populate over here on the website. What their total value locked up is, what their volume is, all of that. So just opening one of these, we can see that this request for information is pinging the graphs API. Currently on Uniswap, it's pinging our hosted network, uh, which was our, you know, our test net. Uh, but it's pinging uh, their subgraph called Uniswap V3. And then down here, you can kind of see what type of information they're getting. So they're trying to get some tokens uh, they're querying tokens, ordering it by the locked value in USD. That's likely some of this information here. Uh, so that's what an API call is and how it affects a website. Now, generally, a website in Web2 will just ping their own database using their own servers. Um, with a graph, what we have is a decentralized network of indexers. So indexers all over the globe that are they hope they use their machines to be able to service that query so when uniswap says hey get the list of tokens that query will then go to one of the indexers that's hosting their subgraph and they will return the data for the website that way it populates on our screen here each time we refresh so we refresh cool it's now populating with all the data so that's what the that's a very quick uh high level view of what the graph does um, and in order to gather that information to populate this, uh, DAPS will have something called a subgraph. And when you go to the Graph Explorer on the Graphs website, um, you will see all the different subgraphs that exist. If you look at the Legacy Explorer, you can see we have even more posted there. There's over 6,000 different subgraphs, um, and on our main net, we currently have um, about 150. Now, some of these subgraphs are officially supported by the project. For example, SushiSwap is, good, is utilized by SushiSwap. You can see currently it doesn't have any query fees because it was posted seven days ago and still needs to be integrated into their, um, into their app. So that's our job as curators. We signal two indexers saying which ones should be picked up. Uh, we're about two and a half weeks into our mainnet, and you can see that the number of subgraphs that exist are already increasing. And some of these are you know, legitimately going to generate a lot of query traffic. Some of them, I couldn't tell you exactly what they are. Um, you know, we've got dummy subgraph. That's probably something that we don't need to index because uh, it's not going to generate any query fees. And currently, we have one indexer who has attempted to index it because somebody's signaling on it. Um, not the best choice, uh, but we're essentially using that indexer's time uh, and their resources to try to host this fake subgraph. So we need to do our jobs in inspecting them and verifying them. The more indexers you have, the more stable something is. If a subgraph only has one indexer that's serving queries and something happens to their hardware, well, that acts as a single point of failure, and that DAP would then be down. 
So if you have 10 indexers on something and one person's hardware goes down, you still have nine more supporting it. Uh, if you have even more, even better, obviously. Uh, but in addition to that, indexers are located all across the globe. So if the end user or the person who's using uh, UMA, if they're located in the US, they're likely going to ping an indexer or the website will ping an indexer who's located in the US because there's lower latency. They're not going to try to ping someone that's all the way across the world uh, just because that's going to be take uh, that'll take longer to return the data um, as opposed to someone with a lower latency. So you can see on UMA, uh, we've got a total of 32 indexers serving data on this. This is one of our strongest subgraphs. Uh, historically, uh, they've been they've been with a graph for a long time, and they've you know just historically produced a lot of a lot of query fees. In fact, I think they've produced more query fees than any other subgraph, uh, also because they've been with us for such a long time. Um, but we have a lot of indexers that are serving their data which means that their end users are going to get faster data. It's going to be more reliable. Um, and you can see if you look at the indexing, um, uh, once this loads, once uh, you can look at and see how far are the indexers to the blockhead. So every time a transaction comes in uh, that is utilizing their contract or their smart contract, indexers have to then write an additional record in, in their database that they're using to serve the data. So here we can see we've got a bunch of people that are zero blocks behind. Uh, if you have someone that's two blocks behind, then you're getting slightly stale data. For some, someone who's five blocks behind, even more stale. Now for a DeFi product, they're going to want to have very accurate information. They want it to be zero blocks behind. So the more indexers you have, the lower latency it'll be for the end user. The higher... Um, the higher the security will be um, just to maintain high availability or um, people call it always on. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, you'll have fresher data or a higher chance for fresher data because you'll have more people at the blockhead uh, than people who are uh, still working on catching back up. In summary, our job as a curator is to signal important subgraphs that we expect to have high query traffic. In addition to that, that's not only signaling what currently has high query traffic, but to use our knowledge base to predict what will have high query traffic in the future. Um, for example, one of the most key parts of our role is that uh, if you look at the overall uh, cryptocurrency, decentralized market, Web3 market, there are so many new projects coming in and there are so many things happening that it's, Im it's impossible for one person to keep track of all of it. And it would be uh, idiotic to think that all of our indexers each individually have to keep up with everything so that they're aware of what's up and coming and what you know where the market's moving and all of that in addition to running all of the you know the technical setup of their indexing node instead what we do is we break off all of the market research and the market predictions to the curators so that the indexers can focus on the work that they do uh, and they focus on the one and sole product of the graph network which is serving queries so they focus on that. We focus on where's the market moving and we tell the indexers where they need to be by staking our GRT and signaling to a subgraph.